I was born in a Christian family and we, we were taken to church at a young age. So we were exposed to Christianity very young and it was part of our life, our lives. And um, in grade three Sunday school, the, the question was posed, how do you, who's a Christian? And I said I was a Christian. And um, later on they asked, my, my Sunday school teacher asked me, how do you know? Well, I said, well, you just know. But that started my journey towards becoming a believer and grade seven I accepted. But it wasn't until um, uh, just after high school, around high school, end of high school, beginning of university, when we had a missions conference. And a former missionary, Eric Pearson, was conducting the, the conference. And uh, at the end, he did an altar call. And he said, if you are open to having God call you one day, then would you come forward? And me, I've grown up in the Alliance and, and in church, and I never do altar calls because I figure that's between me and God. But this time, I just felt like I had to go up. Um, and at the same time, I was going out with Cecilia and, and uh, my wife, my present wife, and, um, and so she, came, she went up too, and we weren't sitting together, and that was a neat little confirmation. But it wasn't until 10 years later that, that we actually started the process of going on to the field. So it was very much kind of being open to that in the beginning, but also having to be there um, because now being on the field, you know, finished the first term, kind of noticed that God had prepared us during that time. Even though I felt like I was ready to go earlier, we as a couple were not ready. And, and so I had to make sure I, I allowed God to um, work in me and, and give me different skills that would be useful on the field later on. Right, that's a, that's a good question because we, you know, growing up as a, as a Chinese, well, I was, I'm a Canadian born Chinese, but uh, my parents were immigrants and so the expectation is, well, we brought you here, we've gone through all this suffering, this this cultural adaptation bring you to this land of promise and wealth that you're going to become a professional, make lots of money, have a secure future for you, your, husband, your, your generations to, to come, and, and that should be it. Um, but they're also believers. So, so for, for um, on the other hand, they, they have to be able to um, be open to this idea of full-time ministry. Um, for, for them, it, it was okay to accept, but, but this question comes up from others who, who don't understand that, and they kind of do shake their head and say, why, and don't understand, what are you doing? Um, it's very poor there. You could make a lot more money doing something else, a little, doing, going elsewhere. Um, but I, I think for, for us, it was that call, that, that saying that, well, God has given us this opportunity to be in this great country and to have acquired these sets of skills um, now for the eternal impact of the kingdom. What are we going to do? And I, I guess one, one of the passages that, that's really impacted me is, is the, end, the last chapter of John where Peter is, is asked, you know, do you, do you love me? And um, and his response is, of course. And of course, you know, that's our greatest commandment. We are to love God. But the, um, the consequence of that is to feed Jesus' sheep. And his sheep are not just my own brothers and sisters. His sheep are not just Cecilia's family who, is, who are still lost. And, but they are his sheep too. And they, his sheep are not just Canadians. They, they are the other lost sheep who are also in other countries. And so um, I had to be open to that. And, and when God calls you, you just can't say no. Um, and now it's, the, it's, even though it's difficult at many times, it's, it's where we do feel we should be. And it's been very fulfilling. Niger, as probably many people know, is a very poor country. It's, I think in 2010, it's ranked as having the lowest HDI, Human Development Index, by the United Nations. And so it's very poorly developed. There's a lot of physical need in the country. But at the same time, it's, it's very um, uh, Muslim. It's an Islamic country. Um, there are, it's estimated there may be a little bit over 1% Christians, but I believe that would probably count most of the expat 
Christians. So in terms of believers, followers of Jesus, it would probably be a little bit less. And so it's a great opportunity for the Alliance to have a holistic ministry go in there. Um, and so with that in mind, we have a holistic team. We have traditional missionaries, quote unquote, who go there um, and learn, learn the language, learn the culture. And so in response to the need that we see in, in Niger, we, we have a holistic multiple disciplinary team uh, working there. So we have people who are able to um, respond to various physical needs. For example, I'm able to use some of my medical background to help develop um, programs such as mosquito nets, um, handing them out, but, but also having them teach about how to use them so that they don't just get sold in another market or put away in a, you know, in a shelf because they're so nice and precious. Um, we also have you know, animal loan programs, so loaning out goats to um, especially women who are disadvantaged, who may have, or, or are widowed, or, or, um, uh, uh, or are just the poor of their communities. Um, we also have other things coming up in the, in th those are more rural um, uh, programs. We also have more urban programs, such as a training center that's starting up. Uh, we'll be trying to uh, teach some trades in that, so such as, you know, welding or, or um, anything that can help people earn a living because we are li dealing with a very illiterate population who has not had any education and these learning opportunities do not come easily to them. Um, also there are tutoring uh, projects where we tutor people in education with their kids. Because um, what we are finding is, is that this younger generation is finally being sent to school but their parents don't speak any French which is the useful quote unquote language there. So they're not able to get ahead. They don't know how to help them with their, their homework. And so having um, us you know, use and leverage people to, to be able to help with that literacy and, and, and just education in general has also been uh, something that we've been able to be involved in. Um, the, the other side, though, is, is um, also trying to teach the, the spiritual aspect. And we want to be able to be an NGO that is different, who is able to respond to the whole person. We don't want rich communities that become corrupt and have a lot of fighting in their communities. What we want are rich, loving communities who are able to share their richness of resources, um, uh, physically, spiritually, um, with other communities. And we want this to be able to become a movement so that they will know how to spread this and share their wealth, their wealth in every aspect with others around them.